Welcome to Share Views with my co-host Stefania Balbaglio, who's director at Cassiopeia Services, by our special guest Andre Menasian, who is uh, CEO of Clever Games. How are you today, uh, Andre? Thank you, Zach. Uh, long time no see. Uh, I like to keep it that way. <laughs> uh, right, so um, basically since we last spoke, I mean, you've been on the bull tack um, from the last time I saw you, which was, I think, earlier last year. Yeah. Um, Dow within a whisker of 20,000, uh, which is the big benchmark, uh, um, number on the big benchmark index. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, I think just in the short term, I think tomorrow being the inauguration of uh, Donald Trump, I think it's a very good chance that Dow Jones will hit 20,000 just to stamp his presidency as a positive, on a positive note. It's, it will be psychological, it won't be, have to do anything with anything else. It would be just to approve his presidency because I think overall the market likes him. And well, the like thing him. that uh, the funny, the funny thing from from anybody who's been in the market yeah. is that uh, uh, the markets have loved him as soon as you know he mm. you know he, he beat Hillary on November the 9th mm. or you know that the result came through. Mm. It's been just a one-way street, one of the best bull you know bull runs there's there's ever been. Mm. Um, but all the commentators, the economists, politicians, everybody else hates him with a passion. Mm. How is that going to play out? Because I mean, it's you know, it, it's it's looks like a car crash situation. I think it's it's not uh, their opposition. I think is not genuine. I think it's just a part of a game plan to. Yeah, but the opposition. If you're a po politician, yeah. I mean, it's basically yeah. once you got the nomination, yeah. uh, all the uh, pres all the politicians around Europe, you know, so somebody said he was a creep, somebody else he was a weirdo, mm. somebody else. Mm. It was just like being at school, mm. and uh, because he's he's a businessman, he's not a politician, and if he does well, politicians aren't going to look good, are they? Yeah, that, that's true. But I think everybody will uh, kind of uh, fall in line and back Trump once he actually has his inauguration tomorrow uh, and I think the market will like him and you know since you know we, you interviewed me before and I said that I think Dow Jones at 20,000 has probably reached the bubble stage but I'm not quite sure now I think it could go further it could we could have a Dow Jones 22,000 before we see any kind of correction so I have taken myself off of the market at around 20 and before New Year, which I had promised I would do. I was tempted to open a new position a couple of days ago, long on Dow Jones, because I think tomorrow, today being Thursday, tomorrow inauguration, I think there's a good chance we hit 20,000. So, and then from there, uh, possibly 22,000, uh, or we just have to see. But I don't think it's definite that this has stopped and the market will not like him and we're going to have a correction. I don't think so. So, Andrea, how long do you think we have to wait before we are going to have a correction in uh, the bond market? I think probably another year or so. Yeah, possibly two years. Possibly. Or it could happen. I mean, this is, this is just like such a key point. Dow Jones 20,000 is just a, such a key point. I mean, I've been saying since 2014, we're going to go to 20,000. And even after, before, a couple of days before Donald Trump's uh, election, you know, uh, winning the presidency nomination, I said that the market will react correctly and we will go to, I mean, 19,000, I was certain. And I said 20,000, we came just short before New Year's. I think it will, tomorrow could be the day that we hit 20,000, it doesn't mean it's the end. doesn't mean it's the end at all. All right, just moving forward, I mean, uh, I've, we've established that the, politi the politicians, the mm -hmm. academics, liberals, and uh, various other people don't like him. But he does have some issues, let's say, with China, which, you know, maybe are his own prop fault. Mm -hmm. um, the Mexico situation is another issue. Um, he's a bit of a loose cannon anyway. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to... Does that affect the market? Is that something we should think about? No. I think all these issues... Are, Donald Trump cannot do anything on his own. He is uh, very much at the mercy of people who... The powers that be, let's say. What, Putin? Not Putin. We see, but they're good, they're good friends. Well, good friends. I mean, it's, it's all a little show they're putting up for us. Uh, it's, I think, 
I think Donald Trump will, will, will have a good presidency. He will probably carry on whatever Obama was doing. I don't think he'll build a wall. I don't think he's going to do anything with Mexico. But powers that be, I think they want uh, to start a third world war with China and Russia, and we shall see what happens. And even if that happens, I think, even if we have a war scenario kind of progressing from here, I think the markets would still keep going higher, which is what happened during the Second World War. Second World War, U.S. markets kept going higher and higher and higher. Because at the end of the day, the U.S. will be the winner of any sort of conflict. So war is good for the stock market. Yep. But uh, war, to me, uh, suggests um, gold prices going up, with gold yep. price going up, and mining stocks going up. And that's very much in tune with your yep. uh, philosophy. It's, uh, I mean, I, for the first time ever, I am in the... I am positive about gold, and I think gold is going to go much higher than people think. And uh, oil prices, again, from a couple of years ago, which I said, I think the oil price was brought down to damage the Russian economy and weaken Putin because so much of their revenue, probably about 70% of Russia's revenue comes from their oil sales. So that was a direct hit to Russia. I don't know if that will continue or not, but my breaking point is if oil passes $60 a barrel, then we are probably going to go to 100 or 110 again. And Andre, regarding the oil price, so yeah. we saw the Saudi Arabia uh, oil yeah. minister, he basically said yeah. that uh, the country is going to uh, agree on a quite a substantial cut in production. Mm. But he also said that, that uh, the market will find the balance in, uh, mm. uh, by, by mid-year, so... Uh, basically, then uh, there wouldn't be the necessity again to keep a cut on production. What's your view on uh, on that? I don't really take notice of who says what. I mean, I, I just look at the massive picture, what is going on in the world. I appreciate what you're saying, and you know maybe it should be considered. But I think that is also part of the game plan. Probably they're going to push the oil prices up, and these are all the actors playing their part. Uh, so I think for me it's, it's, I, don't, I don't take notice of any noise or any comments because yeah. they change in time, you know, and it gets forgotten. And I think for me the breaking point is $60 a barrel. I yeah. think if oil goes beyond $60 a barrel, then I am very positive it's going to go much, much higher regardless of what balance they think it will find. And we, if we come back to the gold, do you have any any so, any specific stock yes. or company? I think uh, I, I'm generally kind of person who goes with safe bets, and it's blue chip stocks, which the FTSE we have, BHT Billiton, we have Glencore, we have Anglo American, and possibly Rio Tinto. And if you look at the look at the performance, price performance in the last few months of those stocks, three stocks have gone up by 60 70 percent already and they keep going up every single day so there is something going on there's something definitely going on and I think the gold price is going to break into the upside and probably if oil passes sixty dollars it will break into the upside so I would there is also another issue that I think the big companies big plutic companies have been able and are able to absorb smaller, less profitable probably companies, which was damaged during all these gold prices, commodity prices generally going down. So I think they'll be the ones who will absorb it and they will get more, more and more powerful. So I think it's a good bet to go with such large companies. And I think even if the market is not doing so well, FTSE, I think those, those stocks We'd probably do well, and not just because they're, they're gold-oriented. I think because commodities in general are, are going to be more and more in demand as the population of the world is increasing. So, right, you mentioned the FTSE there. I mean, that's been you know, finally, after like 20 years, it's finally gone to a new <laughs> high. Any particular comment on that, or is it just follow, follow the Dow for you? I, I follow the Dow for me, but I am quite... Uh, impressed by what, what FTSE has done, maybe it will go to 8,000, uh, whilst the Dow is moving probably to 21, 22,000, which is unbelievable. I mean, 
already the US market is on like PE of about 36, 38, which is really bubble scenario is way too much. But stock market is a fantasy land and might as well push the fantasy a little further. Well, on that fantastical <laughs> note, Andre <laughs> Menasian, CEO at Clever Games, thank you very much for uh, very much, being yeah. with us at Chairview. See you again next week.